first or second year. I don't know, but they explain the journey to becoming a registered dietitian. And I'm sitting there like, hold on. You're telling me I'm doing this stuff for four years and my degree is useless if I don't go to school afterwards? I'm so pissed off. But here I am now. It all worked out in the end anyways, so. Hi everybody. Welcome to Asian Media, a channel all about food and nutrition. So, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, I'm gonna be talking about my six year journey to becoming a registered dietitian. Um, and I'm also gonna provide some tips for future RDs, or as we call them, RD to Bs, um, for the journey. And maybe it'll make your journey a little bit smoother, because mine wasn't very smooth. All right, so let's get into it. So I say my journey is six years long to becoming a registered dietitian, but uh, so far it's only been five and a half. Um, and that means that I'm still not fully a registered dietitian. So there's three steps, at least this is the way I did it. There are three steps to becoming a registered dietitian. The first step is um, enrolling in an accredited dietetics program, which I did at Western. And then the second step is to do an internship or a combined master's and internship, um, which I did the combined master's and internship at Ryerson. And then finally, the step that I still have not done yet is to write the Canadian Dietetic Registration Exam. This is basically the board exam that I have to pass in order to fully become a registered dietitian. So even though I've done all the school, I've done all the training, I still have that one more step to do. Um, and that exam is in May, 2020. So that's what I'm kind of working towards right now. So as of now, I'm not actually a registered dietitian. I'm actually a graduate registered dietitian. So I'm eligible to practice in any field that a dietitian practices in or any setting, but I'm not actually a registered dietitian until I pass that exam. But I've done all the schooling and the training, so it's really just the exam. That's the last hurdle that I have to get over in order to become fully registered dietitian. And that makes the journey six years long. And then I'll finally be a registered dietitian. But this is a really great way to demonstrate the difference between a nutritionist and a registered dietitian. Like you can see all the hoops I've had to jump through to become a registered dietitian, which is why it's really important when you are seeking nutrition advice that you're seeking out a registered dietitian. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my own journey to becoming a registered dietitian um, because it probably looks a lot different from a lot of other people's. And I noticed, you know, going through like the past five and a half years of school that um, I was on a different path than um, a lot of my classmates. So when I was picking a university, I really had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I was taking all the sciences, so I knew like I kind of wanted to do science. It came down to life science and nutrition science. But I was also playing volleyball at a really competitive level at this time, so it was kind of just like, okay, nutrition is cool. One, I really like food, and two, I can actually apply it to playing volleyball. Um, so that's kind of how I got into nutrition. As I mentioned before, the first step to becoming a registered dietitian is to do an accredited dietetics program. So in Ontario, there are only four, and one of them is French, it's at Ottawa. Um, so realistically, I only had three options, which were Ryerson, Guelph, and Western. Ryerson and Guelph were way too close to home and uh, just kind of makes sense for me to go to Western. I wasn't really sold until I went to the like open campus day or whatever it's called. Um, and I saw the campus and I was like, wow, this place is so nice. So that's when I decided like Western is the place I really want to be. And then at the time when I was deciding that I wanted to go to Western, I was not 100% certain that I was going to be playing varsity volleyball. Like I kind of just picked a school based on my interests and me liking the campus. Um, so I really didn't think I was going to be playing volleyball. It wasn't until like March or something that I signed with Western that I was like, okay, I guess I'm gonna be a varsity volleyball player. But up until then I didn't, I obviously wanted to play volleyball, but I just didn't think it was in the cards for me. 
but then I signed and uh, y'all know how that ended up. So the undergrad program, um, the one at Western at least, in the first two years, you, you're learning your core sciences. So uh, chemistry, biochem, food science. And I remember my first week, this is the first week of my program in first year. People were dropping out of the program because they didn't realize that they had to take chemistry. So uh, first tip for the RD to be is, if you don't like science, like this isn't for you. Like nutrition is a science. So the first two years are pretty much just like getting you into the field of nutrition um, and teaching you the sciences of it. So it wasn't until third year when I started kind of specializing in sport nutrition and taking these sport nutrition courses. And I remember my first sport nutrition course and I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, this is, this is what I wanna do. Now, moving forward from third and fourth year, I realized that I loved sport nutrition and I knew that I wasn't going to get the sport nutrition um, experience doing an internship program, which is an internship, but it's usually done out of a hospital. So it's a lot of inpatient clinical work, which is not really what I wanna do. So I knew that I would need to do a master's and have an internship that is kind of arranged based on my interest. So that's kind of why Ryerson was my first choice. Obviously, you know, everybody who's trying to go for an internship or a master's program, like we all have good grades and we're all like, okay, extracurriculars are really gonna set us apart. But at the same time, some people were doing the same extracurriculars. So I thought it was really important for me to do the extracurriculars that showed that, you know, I have one lane and this is the one lane I'm gonna stay in. And I think choosing sport nutrition extracurriculars were um, really set me apart from other applicants. And obviously I wasn't just doing the sport nutrition extracurriculars because I wanted to get into this program. Like these are things that I actually really enjoyed doing. So um, it wasn't just something to put on my resume. It was also like an experience. Now getting to the master's program. So I went to Ryerson University for the nutrition communications program. It's a master's of health science. And the master's program had some really great courses. Like we had um, knowledge translation, we had um, health and behavior, like understanding health and behavior. Um, we also learned nutrition communications, which is basically improving your communication skills, which is really important when you're providing education to any audience. Also, we had a food policy course, which was probably one of my favorite courses, like so interesting, and um, also research methods. So it kind of helps you become a more well-rounded internship candidate. I also chose the master's program because you do like your eight months uh, of coursework before you start your internship. And like coming out of undergrad, I was so not confident in my nutrition skills or my nutrition knowledge. So having that buffer, that eight month buffer coursework um, and to kind of um, learn things that I hadn't really learned in undergrad really, really helped me with my confidence going into my internship. And then finally the internship, which is another eight months. So I did the first two months at a community health center um, and that was my diabetes placement. And then after that, uh, I went to long-term care and my inpatient hospital rotation where I was working with orthopedic and amputee patients. And it was really stressful and it wasn't because um, it was hard. I mean, it was very hard. It was a new environment, mainly because I've just been gearing all of my experiences towards sport nutrition. So it was kind of just like going from one end of the spectrum to the other. So it was quite a shock to me and a learning curve. And then finally, I had my sport nutrition placement this past semester um, and I moved to Ottawa. Uh, I was there from September to December. The first two months I was working with a varsity women's hockey team and that was so much fun. Like that's my dream career right there. Like working with the team, traveling with the team, um, making sure the athletes are fueled and then also providing education. Like that is my dream job. Unfortunately, it just doesn't exist in Canada. So uh, I'm gonna need to find new ways to incorporate like those aspects of the job with like plenty of teams. But that was a really, really great experience. They brought me with them to the Maritimes and we went to New Brunswick for a tournament. And there I had to plan all the snacks, all the meals. During games, I would like drive to Subway and or Swiss Chalet and like pick up dinner and bring it back with me. Before a flight, I was like packing like snack bags for them. Um, and that was really fun, but I also did like nutrition education. So on my Instagram, I talk about how I did a workshop for them 
where I basically like all 30 girls, we went to one of the athletes houses and we just cooked for like three hours straight. Um, but that was so much fun doing workshops like that. And then I did a tiny little bit of counseling. The internship was only two months long. And so I didn't get a lot of time to like, you know, track progress and evaluate and monitor my interventions with um, individual athletes. So that was amazing. Hands down the highlight of my internship experience is working with that team. So finally, last two months, public health, I was doing research um, at Health Canada in the Nutrition Regulations and Standards Division. Um, it was interesting, but obviously my love is with sport nutrition. Um, so now I'm here. I finished the program like two or three weeks ago, and um, now I'm just waiting until May to write the exam. I'm doing this video because people have been asking me like, oh, what's the route to becoming a dietitian in Canada? Um, this is just my experience. Um, but if you have any more questions about either undergrad, the masters or my internship, like definitely hit me up. I'm happy to talk about it um, because I noticed in undergrad, like a lot of us were kind of just like, yeah, I have no idea how this process works. Like we're just gonna go with the flow. And then finally in fourth year, you're staring at applications and you kind of don't really have much of an idea of what you've been doing the past four years or where you're gonna end up. So it's really great to have people like me who've been through it. Um, to kind of help guide you and to provide some tips like what I'm about to do right now. Tip number one, as I mentioned before, if you don't like science, you don't like chemistry, this is not for you. Like nutrition is a science. You need to know all that stuff in order to become a registered dietitian. The next tip is to get into extracurriculars early. If you start in first year, it also gives you an opportunity to figure out like which fields you wanna work in um, get experience in fields that you didn't even knew, know existed. The next tip, which I think is really, really important for RD to bees to understand is that your extracurriculars don't have to be in a hospital. I'm telling you, I hadn't set foot in a inpatient clinical setting until my internship. Um, and I still made it to the master's program. But also because I kind of created my own extracurriculars in sport nutrition, and I focused on that. That's where I realized like that's what I wanted to do and I got those experiences. But also like nutrition is such a broad field. Like you're not, I think when people think of dietetics, they think of clinical inpatient nutrition, long-term care, hospital, diabetes. That's all they think about. But they don't understand that it's actually like way more broad than that. Like that's what my master's program taught me is that um, you can do work in media, you can do work in community gardens, food justice organizations, public health and public policy. You can work in a research lab. Like there's so much more nutrition work that is not extremely clinical that you can do and a lot of people don't know that. So if you're a student in first year and you're realizing like, oh, I don't really think I wanna work in a hospital, um, take the time to look into all the other fields of nutrition. Tip number four, if you, one, don't wanna work in a hospital, and two, um, don't feel confident in your dietetic skills, definitely do a master's program, a combined master's and internship because that's the best decision I ever made. Um, you'll get different experiences, you'll learn a lot more about the field of nutrition, and you'll also um, gain more confidence and your practical and professional skills will be a lot better than they were, you know, coming out of undergrad. Especially if you're like me and that's your first degree. Um, so I think the master's is probably a really great option. If you have questions about that, let me know, comment below or send me a DM on Instagram because um, I only have great things to say about the program. So if you are already an RD and you have some tips for the RD2Bs watching this video, um, comment them below because I'm interested in hearing them and I'm sure other people would love to hear them as well. But I really do hope this was helpful to some of you. And if you have any questions, again, hit me up on Instagram or comment them below. So that concludes my video. The first video of 2020. So yeah, I really hope you like this video. I really hope like those RD2Bs out there, I really hope you gain something from it because it's a long road, it's stressful. And um, I'm just hoping that I alleviated that stress even if it was just a little bit. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, 
If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. 2020 is gonna be great. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you maybe next week, probably next week. I don't know, but I will see you the next time I make a video.